Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup. This week, we have an update to the Rare Beauty versus Rare Beauty Cosmetics lawsuit story that we covered a couple of weeks ago. We actually have exclusive statements from the lawyer representing Rare Beauty Cosmetics. Two weeks ago, all we had was the information presented publicly through news articles and court documents. Now we have statements from Rare Beauty Cosmetics lawyer explaining their side of the story, and I really do think it fleshes it out so much better and I think you're gonna be really interested to hear what they have to say. We've also been talking recently about Urban Decay and how we haven't really seen a whole lot of amazing newness coming from them and it may be because they're not targeting the U.S. customers anymore. They have a new audience. And finally, all over the makeup news seen this week, the Euphoria makeup line is coming. We're gonna talk about it. Hang tight. We're getting into it right now. All right, buckle up, buttercup. We got some very interesting top news for you today. Let's start with Rare Beauty. So I was very surprised to see in my mailbox an email from the lawyer representing Rare Beauty Cosmetics. If you missed that story a couple of weeks ago, I definitely recommend you go check it out. I will link it down below. It's about a six minute story, but it's gonna give you all the background information so you can understand what's happening today. I'm gonna put it in a card so you can just click on it. I'm also gonna put the link in the video description for you. If you didn't see it, go watch that and come right back. But if you did see it and just need a very quick refresher, here's basically what happened. Rare Beauty offered to buy out a company called Rare Beauty Cosmetics. Rare Beauty Cosmetics is owned by a woman named Kashina Hurd, and she started her company back in 2017. Selena Gomez started her company, Rare Beauty, in 2020. And this led to a conflict in who really owns the trademark. Now, when we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, we really focused on the fact that Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez had filed for trademark and gained the trademark for Rare Beauty. And we had a bunch of questions, and a lot of you asked the same questions in the comment section as I had in the video. And the first one was, how in the world does Rare Beauty Cosmetics have a case if Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez owns the trademark in the U.S.? Our second question was about the deal that Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez offered Rare Beauty Cosmetics. They had offered to buy out their brand, buy all of the existing products that had already been printed, and help them rebrand and start a new brand. Why didn't Kashina Heard take that deal? And then the last major question had to do with the number $10 million. Because in the article by the Fashion Law, they had said that Rare Beauty Cosmetics had asked Rare Beauty to pay them $10 million in order to not sue them for trademark. Where in the world did they come up with $10 million? Because when you looked at the public information on Rare Beauty Cosmetics, it said that they had only earned $29,000, almost $30,000 as an annual revenue. So where do you get $10 million from? So I asked, and now we have official answers to those questions. Here we go. I asked our questions to Michael Serino, who is the lawyer for Kashina Heard and Rare Beauty Cosmetics, and he answered me. And oh, did he answer me in this big, long ass document. But we worked through it. I understood it. I digested it. I made sure with him that I understood it. And here is what he told me. Let's start with question number one, which is the who had it first argument. Who is the rightful owner of the Rare Beauty trademark? Well, of course, according to Mr. Serino, Kashina Heard owns it, and this is why he says, apparently in the US and Canada, we handle trademarks just a little bit differently than a lot of places in the world. The coin term is first use in commerce. It's taken very, very seriously. So if you sell a product that has a certain brand name on it, you sell it, you essentially are the first to use in commerce, and you have priority over people that file trademarks at later dates. I had to look it up myself to see if I could find official sources to back up what he was telling me. I will tell you the USPTO website was not user friendly, but what I did find was a bunch of lawyer websites that were explaining it in like regular people terms and they all basically backed that up. Now, I'm gonna read this from my notes so I don't get it wrong. Basically, in order for Selena's Rare Beauty to have rights to the trademark, they have to prove that they filed the mark before Rare Beauty's cosmetics used it in commerce 
or they have to prove that they actually used the mark in commerce at an earlier date than Rare Beauty Cosmetics. Mrs. Sherino told me that Rare Beauty Cosmetics was using their mark as early as April of 2017. That's when they opened their Facebook page and also her Shopify store was set up then where she was selling the cosmetics. Now this is where they feel like they have their case in that Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez didn't file until November of 2017. So that was about seven months after because Sheena was already selling under the Rare Beauty name. Now this is what Mr. Cyrano told me that really kind of hit home with me. He said that Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez in the court filing, which I have not seen because I don't have access to that document, but he said that they claimed that they were using the mark back in 2016, but we were all here when we watched it launch in 2020. Like we all saw that. So I think that's really weird that they would say, if it is in the document, which I'm assuming that it is, that they would say that they were using the mark in 2016 because you have to have some kind of public knowledge of this. Maybe we just missed it. Maybe we just didn't know, but I, I, I don't think that's true. So if all of that lines up, it does sound like Rare Beauty Cosmetics does have rights to the trademark. My second question, I wasn't sure if he was gonna answer me, but he did. Okay, so this was about Kashina not taking the deal for buying out her brand. Why didn't she? And this is what he told me. He said that the negotiations were made by Rare Beauty's chief digital officer. His name is Medi Medi. Kashina essentially decided that she couldn't trust him. This is what Mr. Serino said. He said, quote, he attempted to convince Ms. Heard not to hire an attorney because he claimed that he would not be using one. He also told Mr. Serino back in December of 2021 that he hadn't hired an attorney yet, but Mr. Serino got a document from Medi Medi that had this lawyer's name on it with a signature that was dated in October, two months before he was like, I didn't hire an attorney yet, but he has a document proving he hired him at least in October. On top of that, this is what they say regarding the legal action. Mr. Medi, quote, attempted to intimidate Ms. Heard, telling her she could not prove her case and that she could not afford to regain the right to her trademark. So basically they saw this and they were like, this guy is not gonna be honest. Like anything we cannot nail down in court, he's probably not gonna follow through on. And promising to help her grow her brand is not something they can nail down in court. So that's why she didn't take it is because she didn't trust him. And then the third one, again, I didn't expect him to answer this, but he did. So the $10 million, what's the deal with that? So like we mentioned earlier, two weeks ago, we talked about the public valuation of Rare Beauty Cosmetics being at like $29,000, almost $30, $30,000, not $30, $30,000. That was found on a website called Dun and Broad Street. This website, they use publicly available and given information to help businesses decide whether they want to give out loans or not, or whether they want to invest in companies. Well, Mr. Serino says that Kashina never gave them that information, so it's probably an estimate. He also argues that, quote, the value of a company is generally several times their yearly sales or more. Now, of course, he did not mention the $10 million specifically. He never confirmed or denied that it was $10 million, but this is what he said. He said, quote, as the rightful owner of the rare beauty mark, Miss Heard is entitled to ask whatever she wants for her property. She does not owe Rare Beauty LLC, the Selena Gomez one, a settlement at whatever they offer her, and she is perfectly happy to regain the right to use her mark. Rare Beauty LLC is asking her to give up rights to her name, close down her business, and rebrand. She's spent five years working on this brand. It has meaning to her and they do not dictate what it is worth to her. I also want to note, I thought this was important. Mr. Serino said that Kashina never threatened to sue Rare Beauty by Selena. That basically she had instituted this cancellation proceeding for ownership of the trademark. Basically saying, Rare Beauty, your, your trademark is canceled. And then that would give her the opportunity to register under Rare Beauty Cosmetics. And in that kind of proceeding, there is no monetary award to anybody. Apparently, according to them, Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez had offered her that buyout of the brand and that whole deal before she had retained an attorney, which was probably not the best thing to do. And then when she did hire an attorney, they contacted the attorney and were like, hey, what's she willing to settle for? And they're like, 
I would imagine they said something like uh, $10 million. <laughs> that's not confirmed, but I would imagine that's that's what they were doing is they were asked, you know, what's she gonna settle for? And that's what they said. There was no, they say there was no threat of a lawsuit. The last point I wanted to bring up, which wasn't one of my specific questions, but I think it's important to the story is the effect of Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez existing and its effect on Rare Beauty Cosmetics. This was their point. They said that Rare Beauty Cosmetics is confused often now with Rare Beauty, that they get emails asking about Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez when it's a different company. So they have proof of that apparently. They also say that because they both use Facebook and Instagram that they're crossing platforms there. But this is weird. Supposedly, this is what they're telling me, their Instagram, Rare Beauty Cosmetics Instagram got shut down. They've been trying to ask Instagram like what's going on? Why can't we use our Instagram? But they haven't heard anything back. But it was like right around the same time when Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez filed their countersuit, that's when they shut down Rare Beauty Cosmetics Instagram. I think that's really cruddy. I feel like it, the Instagram shouldn't be taking action unless there's some kind of legal decision made. Like that's really messed up. The other point they made was about trade shows. They said that Rare Beauty Cosmetics, quote, cannot attend trade shows and cannot sell through many online retailers because of Rare Beauty. And that significantly hurts Rare Beauty Cosmetics ability to grow as a brand. So my question to you now is now that you've heard more of Kashina's side of things, have you changed your opinion? Because I felt like last time we were all, including me, very rare beauty by Selena Gomez. Like they sound like they own the trademark. What is this rare beauty cosmetics thinking? But now we have a lot more information. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments. All right, next to the story about the Euphoria line of makeup. This was all over all of the major cosmetic news sources for this week. Everyone seems really excited about this. So back in May of 2021, we actually talked about this, but it was called something else. There were whispers about this Rules Beauty based on the HBO show Euphoria. Rules Beauty came from the names of the two main characters, Rue and Jules. The line was going to be created by A24 which is the production company behind Euphoria. And we haven't heard anything since May of 2021, but now we have heard. So this is what's happening. It looks like the name Rules Beauty is not sticking. They're not doing that. What they're calling it is half magic. So the production company that's behind Euphoria, they're called A24 and the makeup artist, her name is Donnie Davies. She's the main makeup artist on Euphoria. They're working on this line together. And it seems like it's Donnie Bonnie Davies baby. Uh, all the articles really focus on her and her vision for the brand. She said on her personal Instagram quote, for the past two years and while filming season two, I've been secretly working on creating the makeup line of my literal dreams. I couldn't be more completely over the moon thrilled out of my mind to introduce Half Magic. Now, we don't know a whole lot about it right now. The Instagram and the website don't have much information, but we do have a little bit of a hint about what's going to be on it because of the website where, of course, you can sign up for email notifications for when the brand launches. This is what it says. Something weird and beautiful is brewing. Space Cowboy or Glitter Queen? Bella the Bull or Neon Boy Next Door? Bold? or bolder. Follow your creativity down the rabbit hole and shape shift into today, today's version of you with half magic. And yeah, when this launches, I will be here with all the pictures and everything. I will tell you all the details as soon as they're announced. We've been talking about Urban Decay recently in live chat and in videos about how like they've really been seeming to fall relatively flat lately. Uh, nothing really exciting. They're not really in the forefront anymore of, you know, our beauty space. And I saw an article that kind of might explain why. And it's because they're focusing on the Chinese market, which some people may be very confused by because Urban Decay has been touting themselves as a cruelty-free brand since they their inception. They were sold to a not cruelty-free parent company back a while ago, but a lot of people who are cruelty-free don't count the parent company as counting <laughs> if the brand itself does not test on animals. Now, this is something that I did not know. According to Cosmetic Design, Urban Decay tried to 
launch in China in 2012, but they backed out because of the mandatory animal testing rules and they are a cruelty-free brand and all of that. But due to the changes in the animal testing laws in 2021 and because they were selling directly online through places like Tmall, they were able to bypass the anim pre-market animal testing regulations and sell in China. Urban Decay's marketing head in China, her name is Kelly Wang, said that Urban Decay had explosive growth in China, focusing on social media platforms to drive the buzz over there. So yeah, I mean, I kind of get that they're giving up on us here in the US and the UK and in Canada, uh, where most of my audience is. I mean, we haven't really been digging on the Urban Decay releases lately. So now they have a whole new market in China that they were never able to sell to before. So it makes sense. The last top news story is not new information for people that know this stuff. I don't know this stuff and I thought it was really interesting. Did you know there's such thing as a mouth massage where they like rub your lips and they put your, their fingers all up in your mouth and they rub your lips and your cheeks and I was like, what? It's called a buckle massage. There's a recent article in Shape Magazine that I read, which is what brings this to the forefront for me. Anna Babion, who is the owner of Anna Babion Skincare and a certified buckle therapist says, quote, it concentrates on the pressure points that help to restore muscular facial tone and relieve any existing tension in the area. So according to Shape Magazine, the benefits of the treatment range from improved circulation, smoother facial lines, and increased collagen production to tension released in the jaw for clenchers, teeth grinders, and most significantly sufferers from temporomandibular disorders, TMD, which is different than TMJ. Have you ever heard of this? Like somebody freaking reaching into your mouth and like rubbing your lips and like <sighs> I've never heard of it I'm I don't I don't know about that one especially in a pandemic I don't know but I guess if they're gonna wear gloves and stuff I don't know I don't know if you've gotten one do you think I should get one I think it's kind of weird <laughs> all right we have sad news in the beginning of the product report Solo Look Cosmetics is shutting down. Solo Look has been close to my heart for a very long time. I started talking with David from Solo Look with their, I think it was their second palette that they launched. They had released the Flash Dance palette and I think Dirty Dancing was next and we were emailing back and forth. My name was thanked on one of their palettes. I think it was the Grease palette. They're just such nice people over there and I'm so sad that they're shutting down. I think it was a fantastic idea to do licensed products based on nostalgia movies and TV shows and I'm so sad that they're shutting down so I just want to wish everybody over at Solo Look all the best. Going over to new releases, we have Lois Cosmetics. They are releasing the Meet Me at Midnight palette. It does launch on Friday, February 25th. Color story, really pretty, totally matches the theme. Looks like it's gonna be gorgeous, especially on deeper skin tones. Just really deep and sultry. Like it's gorgeous, gorgeous color story there. Then we have the Nabla Read My Mind palette. Very interesting. They're using digital marketing for this, which I haven't seen a whole lot. Very interesting. They are launching that palette on March 3rd. And then we have the Hindash Monochromance palette. Absolutely freaking gorgeous. Uh, they say that it's for face and eyes and it's made to mix or wear alone as full monochromatic looks. Really, really beautiful. I was looking forward to another launch from Hindash and here it is. Wait for this. I died. I died when I read this. ColourPop pop art collection, but what I doubt over, it says in their Instagram caption, unleash your inner artist. James Charles gonna sue you. <laughs> I'm just kidding, <laughs> probably not. But I was like, you, you can't say unleash your inner artist. What, what are you doing? But anyway, it's new packaging that is supposed to help you with art. It's like a retractable pencil. So they're dual sided. There is a cream gel liner on one side and color stick on the other side. And then there is a lippy stick on one side and a lippy pencil on the other side. There's also some new pressed powder blushes with that line. Unleash your inner artist really, y'all know, y'all know exactly what you're doing. 
This is so cute. This is the Revolution and Nikki Lily collection. So adorable. There's a coffee, cake, and cinnamon bun themed products. Prices range from eight pounds to 15 pounds, which translates to about $11 to $20 USD, or you can get the whole collection for 45 pounds, which is about $61 USD. Moving over to Sephora, just as a heads up, Sephora is expanding to 400 new Kohl's stores in over 36 states. I'm gonna put the map link down below Below where you can find out if there's a new one coming near you. They do have a goal of being in 850 stores by 2023. There's also six new brands coming to Sephora inside Kohl's. They are Murad, Clarence, Jack Black, Living Proof, Versace, and Voluspa. I don't know if I said that correctly, but something, V-O-L-U-S-P-A, Voluspa. That's the way I'm going to say it. Before we go any more into Sephora, let me just express my annoyance. I'm just going to vent to you, you know, friend to friend here. I am so annoyed with Sephora <laughs> because they're doing this thing now where they let brands send out free product and then they have people leave reviews before the product even freaking launches. Like I, I get it. Like you want to have a bunch of positive reviews when you launch a product, but I don't know. I just, it just feels icky to me. So I just want you as viewers of What's It Been Makeup to know that this is is happening. It's not that it's shady because it's not. They're like legit reviewers. They're like real people that are reviewing these products. But like, for example, Patrick Starr's One Size Turn Up the Base Beauty Blur Balm Foundation just launched and it already has 254 reviews with an average of 4.7 stars. I mean, they could be legit. They could be totally legit. This, this could be an amazing beauty blur balm foundation. I don't know, but I don't know. I just want you to be aware of what's happening. So when you read those reviews, you can take it for whatever you want. Um, and you know, it's, it is really small in there. It does say that it's an incentivized review, but still, like, I just, I want to make sure we're all aware of what we're reading here. But let's talk a little bit more about this beauty blur balm foundation. It's $33. It does come in 18 shades. They say it is a three in one skin loving blurring beauty balm to boost hydration, balance oil and blur texture while providing a buildable soft matte finish. We have two luxury primers that just launched. We have the one by Gucci. It's called the Mattifying Face Primer. It's $59. They say it has hydrating ingredients with salicylic acid and bamboo powders that control shine and blur the look of pores. So based on my ingredient knowledge as a novice, as just an ingredient geek, like I totally see the, uh, the controlling shine bit with the salicylic acid and the bamboo, but I don't really see anything that's going to blur pores. Like there really isn't a lot of silicone or anything in there that are typically the poor blurring ingredients. So just kind of keep that in mind. Then we have the Tom Ford Traceless Soft Matte Primer. That's $89, so 30 bucks more than the Gucci one. They say it's a primer that creates a protective barrier between skin and makeup for a soft matte finish. Are we saying makeup is dangerous now? Are we saying we need a protective barrier from our makeup? Is that where we're going? Like... Come on, really? But anyway, I just think that's weird. It does have lots of silicone. So if anything is gonna create a protective barrier, it's going to be silicone. But then if you have a silicone foundation, are you just mushing it in with the silicones from the primer? There are some anti-oil ingredients in here. There's witch hazel salicylic acid, but yeah, I just, protecting from makeup, really? Really, Tom Ford? Two more complexion products over at Sephora. We have the Nude Sticks Nude Screen Daily Mineral Veil SPF 30, $35, comes in three shades and will be available March 4th. They say it is a light, hydrating, and oil-free SPF lotion, rich in vegan-powered extracts to help protect skin against free radicals as well as blue light. Next. <laughs> My faces are out of control today. This one, I'm not gonna make any faces, I don't think. Tarte C Power Flex Full Coverage Vegan Concealer comes in full size for $28, or you can get a mini that's $12, 32 shades there. They say it's the yoga pants of concealers. Weightless, full coverage, natural matte finish. It is available on the Sephora app February 21st, online websites on February 22nd, and in stores February 25th. It, I think I heard that it's available at like QVC or HSN, one of those already. So if you're interested now, maybe pop over to one of those sites. This I'm excited about because you know I'm a big fan of Makeup by Mario. We have the Ultra Suede Cozy Lip Creme, $24. Only comes in three shades so far. They say it is a satin matte lip cream that cushions lips comfortably in one swipe color while blurring and smoothing. 
Last lip product over at Sephora, Natasha Denona. I need a rose cream lipstick, $25, three shades. They say it is a brand new formula. Full coverage gel-based voluptuous lipstick defines and conditions the lips while providing maximum moisture. Lightweight creamy texture melts into the skin and keeps lips plump and hydrated over time. I did not see good skincare like lip care in this formula, so I'm not sure where they're getting all that from. It may be a very lovely formula, but it didn't look like, I didn't see anything in there as again, as a novice skincare ingredient geek, I didn't see anything that would do all of those things, but it still may be very lovely. Over at Ulta, you know the big news. If you've been around social media this week, Fenty is definitely coming to Ulta. Trend Mood sneaked it a few weeks ago. It is definitely happening. So it's going to be at Ulta it's February 27th online and in select stores. And then it's gonna launch in all stores on March 6th. They do have all the stuff lifted, listed over on Ulta's website if you're curious what's gonna be available there. The only other newness on Ulta's website was stuff from Makeup Revolution. So we have the Power Shadow Palettes, five colorways called 90s Baby, Manifest Boo, Dalla Dalla Bills, Bougie AF, and Ready Set Go. Those are $10 each. And it was only a matter of time before we got some water activated liners from somebody. It came from Makeup Revolution, the Graphic Artist Palettes. Three colorways in Artist Ego, Bright Babe, and Pretty Pink, $8 each. Until now, at least from my knowledge, water activated liners have been very much an indie brand thing. You'll have to correct me if I'm wrong there because I could totally be wrong. And they also released, which I think is really smart, Creator Bleach Brow. $8. It's essentially a white pomade that you use to bleach your brows without actually bleaching your brows. Looks pretty interesting. Oh, and last thing, I saw this right before I filmed that Revolution is launching a Lion King collection. I'll keep you posted. PR or purchase product of the week. I have such an exciting thing to show you. Thank you so much to Kaleidos for sending over their brand new collection. Th isn't this freaking gorgeous? Oh my gosh, I love it so much. It's so pretty. There's a mirror here inside the box, but I took everything out of the boxes so you could see just the beauteous of these things. Beautiousness, that's a new word. So I have not used this palette yet, but this is very pretty. This is the one that I used today, which is the brown one. Now this, this shade did come broken, but I just smooshed it in there and it's fine. It's staying in there, it's not coming out. But this palette I used all over my eyes today and it was pretty easy to use. I did feel like the mattes got a little stuck. They were a little bit hard to blend because of the pigmentation, because they're so pigmented, but really uh, just a beautiful beautiful, beautiful look I feel like I created today. This shade here is more of a topper than it is really pigmented. Just so you can see, let me swatch that for you. It is more of a topper, but that's what I have all over my lids today, and I think it worked out great. The blush that I use is kind of bronzery, uh, but I think it looks nice. I like it just the way that it is. It's very pretty. And then on my lips today, I use the shade Cold Smoke, which is part of the lip set that comes with this collection. It looks a like a this. Now, I will tell you, I'm not the biggest fan of this lip formula. This one specifically, I felt like it went on very patchy and it was difficult to make it look even. So what I did was I topped it with this Sigma gloss that was also sent in PR. This is from their Cinderella collection and it just says magical lip gloss on the bottom. Uh, but this is what I topped over top of it and I felt like it evened it out really nicely. But this is very much a clay-like formula and I just, I don't know, it's just not my favorite. This was also sent to me this week by Milani. With mascaras, I don't like to give them full reviews right away because I feel like the formula can change over time. But this is the highly rated anti-gravity mascara and I was actually very impressed with it. Gave me really nice length and volume. And the way that it separated my lashes as I was applying because of the plastic bristles and just the shape of it, I felt like it separated my lashes really well as it applied the product. I feel like sometimes with these brushes, sometimes they'll remove the product <laughs> instead of applying it to the lashes, but it really did apply it nicely in layers, and I like that a lot, but I will keep you posted on this as this ages, as some air gets in it, whether it keeps that solid, really nice lengthening and voluming function. Notable sales this week, Pat McGrath VIP sale, 25% off purchases under $125, or you can get 30% off purchases of $125 or more, but there are some exclusions that do apply. We have the ColourPop, 80% off select last call products going on. We have the Pharmacy Glow More Save More Progressive sale, 15% off of $50, 20% off of $75, or 25 
5% off of $100 with code save more ends at 3 a.m. Eastern time on February 22nd. And then Derma E has a 25% off site wide. You're going to use code FEB. 25 and finally 20% off over at Amore Pacific for their moisture bound collection. I didn't see an end date on that. Hopefully it's still going on. And finally, we have our beautiful artist shout out of the week. This week, we're going to be talking about Ellie Lewis artistry. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Okay, so let's talk about, let's stop my, my ugly singing. Let's start with the beautiful, beautiful Ellie. So we have this one dedicated to Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, it's just so bold. The shading is just so perfect. I love it so much. I also love how the texture of the gold really does look like metal. And I love the lash she chose. The lash she chose on the right side of her face, our left, her right. And of course the contrast that she uses is in the contacts there, just really beautiful. Speaking of contacts though, let's look at the second look. We have the pop art zombie. We have seen so many pop art zombies, but I just love the way she executes this. Such a cool concept. What really gets me is the pink under the zombie eye and how it mirrors the pink on the non-zombie side. Really neat contrast. And then finally, for something totally different, let's look at her forest elf look. She created this look for the makeup Revolution, Create a Revolution Challenge 3 on TikTok. The thing with, that gets me about this is the way that she changes the shape of her face, especially in the chin, to really make her look like an elf, really cool, but also the contouring with the green and the gray to make her cheeks look almost bulbous. It, just absolutely beautiful. And of course, the speckling to make it look like she lives in the dirt and like, like a dirty look, but not like a dirt, dirty dirt, like a glamorous dirt. I don't know. I just love it. Her Instagram is absolutely beautiful. If you would like to follow her, I will link her Instagram down below for you. And that, my friends, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you loved the show. And of course, thank you as always to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. They are the ones that very often find the makeup artists that I'm shouting out in the show. So if you are one of those artists or if you appreciate the artist shout out. Thank you to them for submitting them because that's where I find probably 80, 85% of the artists that you see here, along with most of the sales that you see here. So thank you so much to them for all of their submissions. I really appreciate it so very much. Our chat today is going to be at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Hopefully you can come over, hang out and join us. But if you can't, you've got stuff going on. It is no problem at all. It is very easy to find on the replay if you are subscribed just go to your subscription feed. It should be right there for you. If you are not subscribed though, that's okay. You can also find it by going to my channel page, clicking on my videos, and then clicking on the video titled live chat. Thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate you. I hope you love what we're doing here at What's Up In Makeup. It really is a fun show to create. If you would like to hang out a little longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you right over here to watch, including last week's episode of What's Up In Makeup. If you missed it, it is right over there. Go ahead and click on that to watch. Mad love to you. Have a wonderful week and I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye!